Today we'll be looking at a couple of words that show up at probability questions. One of them is or and the other is and. And it's easy to get them confused, so I want to be clear about what each of those means and also how you uh, how you would calculate the answer to questions like that, specifically by avoiding one very common trap that people tend to fall into when they're first learning probability. Now your basic probability question might just have something like, okay, I've got a bag of marbles, there are four blue, three green, two yellow, and one red, and I'm going to draw one marble at random out of this bag, and uh, what would be the probability of it being a yellow marble? In a case like that, you just do, okay, well, there's two yellow marbles, 10 total, so it's going to be 2 over 10, which reduces to 1 fifth. But what you could run into is a question where it doesn't just say, what's the probability of getting yellow? It could say something like, what is the probability of getting a blue marble or a green marble? In a case like that, as long as they get either one or the other, I've won, right, in the sense of a favorable outcome. As long as one of the two happens, then this probability is satisfied. A probability of blue or green is going to be uh, my favorable outcomes are either the blues or the greens. Right? Let's let's look at it in another context. Let's say I've got ten tiles, each of them is marked with a number from one to ten. I put them in a bag and I draw one at random from the bag. If the question is just your basic probability question, what is probability of seven? Well, there's only one favorable outcome here, and that's getting the seven. And there's 10 total outcomes, so my calculation is going to be easy. It's just 1 over 10. It could be a little more complicated if I'm not dealing with the probability of just a simple outcome, but instead I'm dealing with an event, which just means there's more than one outcome that can help me win here. Like here, it's, it's saying, what's the probability of getting a tile with a number greater than 3? Well, in this case, there's actually a whole bunch of numbers here that are greater than three, right? I wouldn't include three here because three is not greater than three, but if I get a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, or a 10, then those are favorable outcomes. There's seven of those numbers I just list, list, listed off there, so my favorable outcomes is seven over 10. All right, that's a little more complicated than the last one, but it still hasn't dealt with this or word. And I want you to understand that whenever you see or in probability, you win, you have a favorable outcome, as long as at least one of the two things, or if there's three things or four things in a complicated question, as long as one of those things happens, then you have a favorable outcome. So let's say I'm calculating what's the probability of getting a two or a seven when I draw a tile. Now, that'll win, I'll have a favorable outcome as long as I have either a 2 or a 7. So that's two favorable outcomes out of a total of 10 possible outcomes. right? 2 or 7, and then 10 total, that gives me 2 out of 10. Now, in this case, it happens to be true that this is the same answer I'd get if I separately calculated the probability of getting a 2 and the probability of getting a 7, and I were to add them together. But this is dangerous. This isn't always safe, and so it's something you should avoid doing. In this case, it does happen to work out, right? The probability of getting a 2 is 1 out of 10. The probability of getting a 7 is 1 out of 10. You add those together, you get 2 out of 10. But in a case like this one here, probability of 2 or even, you don't want to calculate, well, let me get the probability of 2 and the probability of getting an even one and add those together, because you get the wrong answer. I'll show you what I mean. Let's first identify which ones would be favorable outcomes for a probability of two, right? There's only one here, I'd get a two. Now let's look at the outcomes that would give me even as a result. So that would be the two, the four, the six, the eight, and the 10. So if I look at all my favorable outcomes that are circled at least once, I've got five and there's 10 total outcomes, so my correct answer is five out of 10 or one half. But if I were to be a little lazy and I were to say, well, let me get the probability of getting a two, which is one out of 10, and add that to the probability of getting an even number, which is five out of 10, I'd get the wrong answer, six out of 10. No good, can't do that. You always have to consider all of the outcomes together. Let me just see which ones uh, are favorable after I've kind of applied both of these conditions here, right? Let me give you another example. But let's say you run into a question where it talks about and. In an and question, you win only if both things happen, okay? So let's see here, instead, it doesn't say two or even, it says two and even. That and means that I only win if both of these things are true. 
So let me take all my 10 tiles. Let me say to myself, which of these would make my first thing come true? And there's really only one, right? The two is the only outcome that makes this happen. Uh, the ones that make even uh, come true would be two, four, six, eight, and 10. But if the question is about and, I can't say, well, I've got five circled outcomes here, so it's going to be five over 10. No, instead, it's just the ones that are circled both times. In this case, the favorable outcome, there's only one, is two. It's the only number that's both two and even. So my answer is going to be one out of 10. And once again, if I were to say to myself, oh, well, and, that sounds a lot like plus, right? In algebra, and usually means plus. So let me get the probability of getting two, which is one out of 10, the probability of getting even, which is five out of 10, add them together. That's going to give me the wrong answer again. No, you can't do that. If it's an and, you got to see which outcomes satisfy both conditions, which ones get both circles here. And that's going to be your correct answer, one out of 10. Let's do another one. What about probability of prime and odd? Okay, so prime, you gotta know your prime numbers, right? The prime numbers from uh, that are going up to 10, there's two, three, five, and seven, okay? So you would go through first and say, all right, let me circle my prime numbers, two, three, five, and seven. And then you would separately say, okay, let me figure out what numbers are odd numbers. The odd numbers here, one, three, five, seven, and nine. So the ones that will make me win here are the only are only the ones that are circled both times, right? One is odd, but it's not prime, so it doesn't make me win. It's not a favorable outcome. Two is prime, but it's not odd, so that means in this case it's not a favorable outcome. The ones that are prime and odd, that's three, five, and seven, are the ones that count for me. So when I calculate my favorable outcomes here, it's going to be three out of a possibility of ten. That's my correct answer. And I can't just do, well, there's four prime numbers and five odd numbers, so together I'm going to get 9 out of 10. No, that's not going to be correct. Now, let's, let's apply this to some actual examples using IXL. So this is from grade 8, BB2. Uh, and you see this question here is saying, you flip a coin. What is the probability not tails? So far, there's not an and or an or in here. Well, we'll get through this first. Not tails, we say, which outcomes make this happen? Well, it's just heads. So it's asking me to write my answer as a fraction. I'm going to write one half. Uh, and now this one here is giving me an or. It's saying odd or greater than three. So I say, okay, first let me decide which of these outcomes would make this happen. Well, there's only one, three, right? Three would make odd happen. Greater than three, that's I got to say, which outcomes make that happen? Well, that's just four. So three is odd, that makes this happen. Four is greater than three, that makes this happen. So since it's an or, that means as long as one of these things is happening, I win. I've said that three is now a favorable outcome, four is a favorable outcome, so I've got two favorable outcomes out of a total of three. So that's my answer, two thirds. All right, let's try this other one. Six or less than six. These can be a little confusing when you're first dealing with them, but you got to remind yourself, let me just treat them separately. What's the probability of six? Let me figure out what the outcomes are that make six happen. Well, it's just the number of six, right? Uh, what are the outcomes that make less than six happen? Well, there's one, two, three, four, and five. How many outcomes have I listed? I listed the six, I listed one, two, three, four, and five. That's a total of six outcomes. That's out of uh, so that's six favorable outcomes out of a total of six, that's going to be an answer of 100%. What about this one? Not greater than three. Well, not greater than three. Greater than three would be four, five, and six. So not greater than three would just be three. That's the only one. So there's one favorable outcome out of four possible as a percentage. That's going to be 25%. Uh, let's do one last one. What is the probability of getting a two? or greater than two. So I do these separately. The outcome that gives me two, there's only one, it's this guy here, two, right? Greater than two, well, this guy or this guy, three or four would make this happen. And as long as one of these two things happens, so two or greater than two, these two guys, I win. So that's three favorable outcomes. They all end up showing up in either two or greater than two. Uh, three out of three, but instead of writing three out of three, I reduce that to one. So that's how you do and that's how you do or. I hope this has been helpful.